championship. And hello again, everybody. I'm Tim Brandt. These two clubs had two classic matchups in the regular season. North Carolina had to come from 10 points down in the last six minutes to beat Wake in the game one. But then Wake Forest won in Chapel Hill. But in the title game today, the Deeks are banged up. Rusty LaRue comes in with a badly sprained thumb, and Randolph Childress has a dislocated finger. Working with me today is Dan Bonner. Dan, what is the latest on Randolph Childress, and how will it affect him? Well, let's, let's, let's concentrate on Rusty LaRue for a second as we see Childress getting hurt. LaRue's an important factor. Childress, however, is a critical factor. It's that middle knuckle on his pinky finger. He says it hurts him more catching the ball and dribbling the ball than it does shooting the ball, and you can see that he has shot the ball extremely well in this ACC tournament. Tim Duncan, however, is Mr. Inside, and Duncan has done a marvelous job in this ACC tournament, as he has done all year, and Randolph Childress knows how important the inside game must be. We're at our best when me and Timmy have proper balance on the inside, outside, and scoring and things like that. It's a little difficult uh, to win games when you're so heavily uh, sided either inside or outside because you need a proper balance to win in this league and in this conference. I can tell you this, it will be a war in the paint today with Wallace and Duncan. Well, Wallace and Duncan are two of the premier centers, not only in the ACC, but in the country. You get a look at Duncan there on your left and Wallace on your right. Wallace shooting a lot of dunks so far in this tournament because he runs up and down the court very effectively. Wallace did the job against Joe Smith yesterday. Is he up to the challenge? Definitely head on collision because I know he's not going to back down from the Carolina challenge and I know I won't back down. Just play the basketball. I know how to play. Um, it's not going to be no trick moves or anything like that. Just go straight up. Tim Duncan has played very well against Rasheed Wallace, but Tim, I'll tell you what, Rasheed went out there and established himself yesterday against Joe Smith. I expect him to come out here today and play well. Dan, it has been a long, long time since the Demon Deacons have been to this final game. The last time Wake Forest was in the championship game was 1978. Carl Tacey's Deacons led by Rod Griffin, who had 25 points, but it was Jim Spadarkel and the Duke Blue Devils who wore the crown. That was 17 years ago. Today, Wake Forest will battle for the right to be called ACC champions. We'll be back. Atlanta's Coach Conference Basketball of the Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports Network will continue after these messages from your ACC station. one at Winston-Salem. The Tar Heels went ahead by one. After a Wake Forest five-second violation at Donna Williams' basket, but the Deeks couldn't convert when they had a chance to win it. Now, game two in Chapel Hill. Tim Duncan held Rashid Wallace to no field goals. Only four points. Duncan finished with 25 points in that ball game. A couple of great matchups today when you talk about Stackhouse, you talk about Childress, and inside, Dan, you've got the big guys, Wallace and Duncan. Well, I think this is going to be really fascinating because you've got two of the best players in the country in Childress and Duncan, but their teammates have to step up because this starting five for North Carolina is as good as there is in the country. All right, now let's meet the participants of this championship game. Here is our PA announcer, Larry Dunlap. Good afternoon, and welcome to Greensboro and the Greensboro Coliseum for the championship game of the 42nd Atlantic Coast Conference Basketball Tournament. Today's final features the University of North Carolina Tar Heels and the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest University. The starters for North Carolina. At forward, a 6'6 sophomore from Kinston, North Carolina, number 42, Jerry Stackhouse. forward a 6'4 junior from Beaver Falls Pennsylvania number 24 Dante Calabria the Tar Heel Center a 6'10 sophomore from Philadelphia Pennsylvania number 30 Rashid Wallace at guard a 6'4 sophomore from Charlotte North Carolina number 5 Jeff McGinnis a 6'3 senior from Garner, North Carolina, number 21, Donald Williams. Dean Smith coaches the Tar Heels. And now the starters for Wake Forest. At forward, a 
6'6 senior from Clinton, North Carolina, number 34, Travis Banks. At forward, a 6'10 sophomore from Valladolid, Spain, number 44, Ricky Perral. Center for Wake Forest, a 6'10 sophomore from St. Croix, the Virgin Islands, number 21, Tim Duncan. At guard, a 6'1 freshman from Cuthbert, Georgia, number 25, Jerry Braswell. And at guard, a 6'2 senior from Clinton, Maryland, number 22, Randolph Childress. Wake Forest is coached by Dave Odom. Fourth-ranked North Carolina, seventh-ranked Wake Forest will be back after this message from Bud Light. And Randolph Childress, who we assume will play a major role in this game this afternoon. And Jerry Stackhouse of North Carolina. These two schools first met way back in 1911. You see those numbers, and the Deke won only once between 1983-1992. But they can play with Carolina now. The officials, Dick Paparo, Frank Scagliata, and Rick Hartzell. And it'll be Wake Forest ball to start things off. Here's a look at the officials. Dick Paparo in his eighth championship game. Frank Scagliata has been there four times. And Rick Hartzell officiating his first championship game in the Atlantic Coast Conference. defense to start things off for North Carolina. This is Randolph Childress. It'll be Jeff McGinnis who will check him first. Inside they go to Duncan. A spin move on the baseline. And blocked out by Stackhouse. Great help defense by Stackhouse. Will be looked to do that all afternoon. Wake Forest also starts in a man defense. Here's Wallace with the turnaround. Tim, early in the game, both teams have gotten help on the first possession, which has gone inside to the other team's big guy. The help has been there, and I think that's going to be necessary. Randolph Childress, nothing but iron. McGinnis will push it the other way. Numbers aren't there. This is Calabria on the left elbow. Williams working on Peral. He walked. You know, I've really been impressed with Ricky Peral in this tournament. At his size, almost six feet ten, his ability to move his feet out on the perimeter. That time he prevented the penetration by Donald Williams and forced the walk. That young man has had a very, very good tournament. That's the first turnover for North Carolina. The Tar Heels had 14 turnovers yesterday. It's important that Wake Forest score consistently. Now, that sounds like a silly thing to say, but you've got to put the ball in the basket to prevent North Carolina's transition offense from being in full gear. Great block out by Wallace. Wouldn't let Duncan inside. Here he is at the top of the key. And Wake Forest has done a nice job getting back on defense the first couple of trips. And there's Wallace. percent from the field, Tim. He's dunking about every other shot. Children's off balance too hard. <laughs> Calabria takes it in deep, gets it to stack out, and it's 4 nothing. North Carolina. That one. Stackhouse has really been a presence defensively early in the game. Braswell is just a freshman, but Dave Odom says he is totally unaffected by his surroundings. And Dave said he could be playing in Dean's living room and wouldn't be affected. That would affect most of us unless Dean has a real high ceiling. <laughs> Two 
to the Tar Heels. Tim, Wake Forest is a solid defensive ball club. One of the reasons is that they move their feet very effectively and prevent the penetration, but another reason when penetration occurs, you've got number 21 there to help you out, and that time the penetration was stopped and the ball was thrown out of bounds. 16.55 to play in the first half. It's a 4-2 game with Carolina leads. Wallace got a hand on it. McGinnis takes it to the other end, and he gets caught in the air. Turnover number three. <laughs> Duncan Bottom down two. 3 on 2 and Wake Forest lost the numbers. Children shoot from outside. That's the three. Wake with its first lead. Great decision by Ricky Peral to not take an open three and give it to Randolph Childress. That inside matchup, Duncan and uh, Wallace is going to be critical. Calabria from outside, too oh, hard. A great rebound. Deeks by one. Childress is fouled by McGinnis. For McGinnis, that's his first. And the first team foul against North Carolina. It's 5-4. Wake with 16 minutes to play in the first half of the championship game from Greensboro. Last second ball, the SEC championship game in overtime. And at the Big East, well, look at that score. Here it's 5-4. Wake Forest leading by one. 16 minutes to play in the first half. North Carolina zones. Coming out of the timeout. Gonna watch for the trap in this situation. Of course, if Wake can break out of the trap, they've got some three-point shooters in the ball game. Can get an easy look. Down in the corner to Braswell. That's good for three more. Good ball movement by Wake Forest. Braswell with five points early. We talked about other guys having to step up to compete against this North Carolina squad, and Braswell filling the bill early. Interesting, Dan, because Braswell had not had a great tournament. Rutland's gotten a lot more playing time than has Braswell, but he's got five early. McGinnis with the crossover, the jumper, and the short. Great block out by Braswell. And he comes down with the rebound. How about the freshman coming up big here early? Well, he did two very solid things right there. Now he's going to rise up for another three. But he blocked out and he prevented McGinnis from getting by. Calabria takes it down. And Braswell knocked it off the play. Braswell has been in the center of this game since it started. We've played five minutes here in Greensboro, and Carolina has five turnovers already. Well, the key for Wake Forest is to start cashing those turnovers in, Tim. They've only got a four-point lead in spite of those four turnovers. Inside to go to Peral. They double on him, and so they kick it out to Duncan. Duncan gets it back. Here's Peral for two. Carolina's got a 3-0-3. Stackhouse tries to outrun him and loses it out of bounds. Stackhouse did outrun them. He outran the ball. He outran Wake Forest. He outran everybody. My heavens, did he explode down the court. Jerry, you got to take the ball with you, buddy. Jerry Stackhouse is a takeover type guy, and if you let him feel it, he'll take it. Then look out. Randolph Childress goes out of the ball game. Dave Odom wants to chat with him. Have not noticed Randolph having any problems with that finger early in the game. Here's Banks. Tim, early in this game, the Demon Deacons not showing very good patience on their shot selection. But they've been strong on the boards. Wake has scored eight straight points as Carolina can't get it to go down either. Eight to four Deeks. Two freshman guards in now for the Demon Deacons, Braswell and Rutland. And Childress getting back up off the bench. He's going to come right back in the ball game. That might might have been just a check. Randolph, how do you feel, has the finger. Boom. All right, it's great to get back in. Here's Rutland, off balance, tough shot. Big great rebound by Banks. And the jump hook gets the roll. Scooter Banks is a powerful young man inside, working over Jerry Stackhouse that time on the board. Crowd 
one at a walk with McGinnis. Here's Williams. Williams for three. Oh, that's nicely done. 10-7, Wake Forest. See if Wake Forest tries to exploit the Ricardo Peral, Dante Calabria matchup on this end of the court as we get a look at the three-point numbers. Peral, of course, at 6'10", Calabria only about 6'4", 6'5". Down low to Duncan. The follow is no good. The foul is on Wallace. That'll be his first. Duncan made sort of a little double clutch move there that got Rasheed Wallace to move into him and commit the foul. Shimon Williams checks in along with Landry and Sullivan also comes in for Carolina. Williams and Wallace stay in. Rusty LaRue comes in. He has a sore thumb. And Randolph Childress checks back in for Wake Forest and he's playing, as we've told you, with that dislocated baby finger. Coming up at halftime, stay tuned for the Continental Airlines Fast Takes Contest. And it's brought to you by Continental, the official airline of the ACC. Duncan makes them both. Twelve and a half to play in his first half of the championship game. Tim Brandt, Dan Bonner with you at the Greensboro Coliseum. Williams running one-hander. He has five points. Slapped away from Childress. Wallace was out in front. Williams couldn't get it to him. The numbers aren't there for LaRue. Well, the only number he needs to know about is 22, and he found it. On the other side, Tony Rutland was jumping up and down that he was open, and Randolph says, all right, be patient. Here we go. We'll set things. But they lose it team handling the ball particularly well early in the game. That's now three turnovers by Wake Forest. Each team doing an outstanding job helping out against the other team's big guy. 11.35 to play in the first half. We'll be back after this message from Budweiser. Williams gets it back. Over to Landry from beyond the arc. Board by Sullivan, but he won't. Turnover number seven for Carolina. This is just a good, powerful rebound by Sullivan. Dean Smith claiming that he maintained that pivot foot. <laughs> you can see him. You can see his read his lips. The words pivot foot were there. LaRue will fire for three. Blank off the iron. Here come the Tar Heels. Wake Forest not shooting the ball particularly well early in the game. Williams. Boy, the team's really going hard at one another. Haven't had a lot of offensive production, but it's not for lack of effort. Nice fake by LaRue. Can't get the shot to go, though. You know, Randolph Childress, it appears to me, is having trouble handling the basketball, Tim. Well, Danny told us out here just before the game that the finger is sore. Here's Wallace. And Rutland is fouled by Landry. Well, he did talk about the finger being sore. He said he hoped the adrenaline would get going. As you look at Pierce Landry, Landry had an interesting game yesterday. Didn't he? He played 11 minutes and fouled out. Those Two points, five fouls in 11 minutes. But Childress, twice in this game, as Childress has brought the ball up the court and tried to get himself in position to shoot, I've had the impression that he lost control of the ball because he couldn't handle it with that right hand. He told us that he thought there'd be more problems handling the ball than shooting it, and thus far, it appears that he has been correct. What a record he's had. Four straight NCAAs. Comes up big in the biggest games. Odom says the only thing about him that's permanent is his strong will. Nice little jump hook by Duncan. Boy, great recognition by Wake Forest. Wallace goes to the bench for a breather and they go right at Swicker. Five point lead for Wake Forest. McGinnis gets it back. Kicks it out to Landry. Stackhouse with a follow and he's fouled. Braswell got it. 
That'll be the first on Braswell and the first team foul against Wake Forest. You know, a key for Carolina this year has been the ability to limit opponents' chances at the foul line, keep them off the charity strike. There is uh, Rasheed Wallace taking his breather. I think particularly early in the game, there Arkansas. <laughs> Don't count them out of anything yet as they win the SEC championship. But early in this game, I think you'll see both coaches going to their bench frequently. We get down toward the end of the game, though. I think you'll see the starters in the game. Banks comes back in, and Duncan gets his first blow. Stackhouse is a 72% free throw shooter. He's had a great season. So tough. This is that one. And that's what you call snatching a rebound right there by Scooter Banks. And interestingly, Duncan goes to the bench, and so Dean Smith calls Rasheed Wallace from his seat and sends him to the scorer's table to come back in. Deeks by five. Banks on Swicker. Stack out for the rebound. What a great story he is. Former walk-on stepped in when Calabria was hurt. He's a 5 beta kappa, and he's really come up big this year for Dean Smith. It's one of the few times in this ballgame that North Carolina has been able to get a transition opportunity. For all, too hard. Carolina making a run. Here's McGinnis. Inside they go, and it's taken away by Childress. Eight turnovers now for the Tar Heels. Tim, he just lost it on the dribble again, and he shakes his hand. He's really having a tough time handling the ball. And he throws it away. That's four turnovers for Wake. Tim Duncan comes back in, and Rusty LaRue will go out of the ball game. Wake Forest by three. Eight and a half minutes to play in the first half. There's the ball going inside the wall as Duncan commits the foul. That's a danger point for Wake Forest. You saw that graphic, though, about the opportunities that Wake has had. They've forced eight turnovers, but have only scored three points. This time, you'll notice Wallace catches the ball. He's too quick to the basket for any help to come down, and Duncan commits the foul. Wallace. Rashid Wallace, 6'10", 225 pounds. Tim Duncan, 6'10", 238. Stay tuned at halftime when Dick Patel presents the direct TV dish out the winner's sweepstakes. That's coming your way at halftime. Wallace makes the second one, and it's a two-point game. Tar Heels within two. Wallace with three points now, but thus far in the first 12 minutes of this game, the story to my mind has been the fact that North Carolina has turned the ball over eight times, and Wake Forest has only been able to score three points as a result. So the Deacons not really cashing in on opportunities, but there's an opportunity they are not about to pass up. Childress for three more. His second three of the game, 17 to 12, Wake Forest. Calabria tries to answer it. Stackhouse inside. He's fouled. This will be on Banks. Well, that battle, Stackhouse and Banks, two really strong, powerful young men. That time, Stackhouse won the battle. That's the third team foul against Wake Forest, the first on Banks. Randolph Childress has had a tough time handling the ball, so this time he lets somebody else handle it. Coming off that screen, getting his feet set dropping down that three, and we've seen that more than a few times in this tournament. Jerry Stackhouse with two points today. He had 14 against Clemson, 19 against Maryland, also with 14 rebounds yesterday. Stackhouse hit that big three-point basket with the Tar Heels trailing 86 to 83. He's had an outstanding tournament. Of course, he was the tournament MVP last year. Team 14 Wake Forest will return after this message from Parkwest Auto Parts. 
pushed in my CC basketball is brought to you in part by Man for Men and by Toyota. There you get a look at Gilbert McGregor, former outstanding player for the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Tough ticket to get today. The ACC championship game, more than 23,000 here. Neither team began really shooting well. North Carolina only 29% on 5 for 17. Wake Forest, 6 of 19 for 32%. How about that? Kentucky over Arkansas. Wake Forest. Low scoring game. And I think that favors Wake Forest. The low scoring game means that Wake Forest has cut off the North Carolina transition game. Here's Wallace. No foul call. Let him play. Here's Glaber. Beyond the arc. Yes. that Calabria is going to have to make. You can see the kind of attention that Wake Forest is devoting inside to Rasheed Wallace. Looks like there's going to be some openings on the perimeter, so the perimeter guys are going to have to knock him in the goal. Carolina cuts Wake's lead to two. Rutland left alone. Too hard. And it's the sound on the other end. Banks is going to pick up the foul, but that time Donald Williams dropped down inside against Tim Duncan. Duncan pitched it back out. Rutland missed the three. Scooter Banks just cutting back door. It's his own defense. Nobody sees him. They throw it over the head of Rasheed Wallace. Not too many times you're going to throw that lob with Wallace back there. That's the second personal Banks. And McGinnis throws the two. We're tied at 19. It's the first tie of the ball game. Carolina fans are alive. Childress. by Calabria. That's for two. They're starting to heat up now. Dante has five. Parole oh. gets it back. Oh. And loses it. Tried to get it to Banks. Overpassing. That's five turnovers for the Deeks. Peral looks a little bit uncomfortable on the offensive end, Tim. He's standing around a little bit, not really cutting into positions where he can do some damage. Rusty LaRue now back in the game. Dave Odom talking to Ricky Peral over on the bench, trying to get his positioning on the offensive end straightened out. And Randolph Childress really trying to protect that hand. points. Tempo starting to pick up. 5 5 to play in the first half. Children for three more. North Carolina, however, is defending him the only way you can when he's shooting the ball like that. Tar Heels are scoring on their trips down the court. They give McGinnis the paint. He takes it. Childress is going to tell Rutland, hey, <laughs> don't let him go all the way to the basket. I think he told him just now to play his offhand. That's the way he's been going, and he found an alley the last time. Banks is off to the right. Calabria fights for the rebound. What a great job by Calabria. How about the move by McGinnis? It has it locked down. The outlet to Childress. Gets the screen from Banks, and he's fouled by Williams. Oh, Williams better stop that. You don't want to get a tee. Tim Duncan's what a what a shot blocking presence inside. And the best thing about Duncan, he blocks them and he controls them. 
Great hands by Duncan. Picks the ball up, holds it high. Good outlet pass. Tim Duncan now with 118 blocks for the year. North Carolina doing a great job keeping the ball away from Duncan. Rutland dribbled into trouble. Now takes it out to the roof. trying to get out of the way. Stackhouse able to get past for all, and Duncan just moving across the lane. Almost looks like he was trying to get out of the way. He didn't want to pick up that foul. When Stackhouse attacks the basket like that, he's awfully difficult to stop, and Duncan probably made a mistake to even try. Stackhouse hits his fifth point. He has another one coming. This is the first time the ACC has hosted the tournament since 1988. What a marvelous job they've done. Greensboro hosting the tournament for the first time since 1988. Tied at 28 with 3.36 to play and the half will be back after this message from Budweiser. Play that Dean Smith certainly doesn't want to see a lot of. It's Randolph Childress from three. Childress missed his first three-point attempt, but he's made his last four. Childress with a great quick release. The ball just going in the basket. Randolph's mother and stepfather. And there's Randolph Childress. Has 12 points, all three-point baskets, four or five from three-point range. He has had some difficulty, it appears to us, handling the basketball. That that finger that dislocated the second knuckle on the knuckle on the pinky of his right hand, that does seem to be bothering him in terms of his ability to dribble the ball, in terms of ability to catch the ball. But so far his shooting has been seemingly unaffected. We are tied at 28 with three and a half minutes to play in the first half. And Duncan is out there with two personal fouls. Wouldn't be surprised at all if North Carolina goes right at him with Rasheed Wallace the next time the Tar Heels get the ball. Childress flashes up top. Oh, my. Oh, he bottoms it out. 15 points already for Randolph Childress. The defensive switch now. Zone defense. Stackhouse with the turnaround. How sweet is that? Cuts the lead to one. Wake Forest sort of standing around in that zone defense. You can play a zone, you got to be a little more aggressive than that. Inside to go to Tim Duncan with the sky hook. Calabria comes down with it. Deacon's really getting back on the defense, trying to avoid that transition game. Duncan and Wallace matched up inside again. Stackhouse asking for the ball. Wallace backs it in, falling away. Well, if you've got Duncan down in there, Wake has to risk his third foul. If it's Peral, then that's not as strong defensively as Duncan. So North Carolina with an advantage on the offensive end on the inside at the moment. Tar Heels leading by one. Childress. it inside. Perot gets a hand on it. Great save by Wallace. Out to McGinnis. Yes! Yeah. 35-31 North Carolina. shot clock. Inside the Duncan. Mismatch down low. He was working on Stackhouse. North Carolina not very active in the zone defense. Duncan now with six points. Wake Forest 
in the zone. Tar Heel lead is two. And it's a zone that's spread very, very wide. That's one of the reasons. Wallace with the rebound to Calabria. Peral has fallen down. Calabria took advantage of him. Buckets good and one. Stackhouse and Peral really going at one another. You can see Stackhouse just throws him down. Now Peral is going to get back up, and as he does, he comes in there and gets Calabria with the leg. So North Carolina, the beneficiary right there of a smart play by Dante Calabria, recognizing he's open and taking it right to the basket, although he misses the opportunity for the three-point play. 43 seconds to play in the half. Here's LaRue. Air ball. Duncan with the save. 30 seconds in the half. Forget right guard pure power proud to present the ACC player of the year. Look for this just prior to the second half tip off. 20 seconds. Here's LaRue. Childress gets it back. 10 on the shot clock. 12 on the game clock. Rutland, this is for three. Oh, agree with you. He looked right at him and said, what are you doing that for? Well, I, I, that's not a bad foul. It's, it's one foul that you maybe re will regret at the end of the game, but that way they don't well, get a shot off. And that's exactly right. That's the only place you'll see it is near the end of the game. 38-33 is our first half score. Carolina in the lead. Today's ACC action is brought to you by... Nationwide Insurance, by Chrysler Cirrus, by Central Fidelity Bank, by BP Oil, and by Right Guard. Paul, thank you very much. That's a good point you make, but the situation is Carolina's getting balance scoring from a lot of guys where Randolph Childress with 15 is carrying the load for Wake Forest. And Dan, as we look at the statistics, you'll see that North Carolina has re out-rebounded Wake Forest big time. North Carolina absolutely dominating the boards. North Carolina getting the ball inside. 
I think the key in the first half, the key stat isn't even up there, and that number is three, and that's the fouls on Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan uh, picked up that third, that third foul in the first half. Now, for North Carolina, Donald Williams really got him going early. Donald Williams uh, hit a couple of threes, hit this three right here early in the basketball game. I think that opened things up on the inside for North Carolina, enabled Stackhouse to get going. And speaking of Stackhouse, here he pushes Duncan out of the way. This is with five seconds left in the first half. Duncan picks up the personal foul. That's personal foul number three. And you really have to wonder how that will affect Tim Duncan's play in the second half. Another key I thought in the first half was Ricky Peral is the third leading Wake Forest scorer in this tournament average in 12 and a half a game. He hasn't scored. Those three fouls on Duncan changed the complexion of this game dramatically. We'll be back after this from right guard. Sports exclusive coverage of ACC basketball is brought to you by Budweiser. By Ford. By Discus Athletic. By Direct TV. By Continental Airlines. And by Food Lion. 38-33 is our halftime score. North Carolina leading Wake Forest. How about the game plan, Dan? Well, I think North Carolina, it's much to their advantage when they get their transition game going. As this game picked up steam, North Carolina with some easier opportunities, and they were able to convert. And I think the key for Wake Forest in the second half, you can express it in one word, Duncan, as in Tim Duncan. Duncan with those three personal fouls and how effective he's going to be with those three fouls is a big question. Now, he can play, but what, will he be effective particularly defending Rasheed Wallace. Here's my question. I mean, they were so badly out-rebounded by Carolina with Duncan in the ballgame. What happens now? Well, Duncan does have six of the 13 Wake Forest rebounds, but he's just going to have to be careful on the offensive boards. And, you know, really, though, we talked about the centers. You can see there, again, the key stat there is the three. Not much to choose, both to holding one another down. North Carolina, though, getting great balance. They've got seven from Calabria, nine from Stackhouse, eight from Williams, seven from McGinnis. If you believe in statistics, look at this. Well, i got another stat for you. Nine out of the last nine times, the team that scored the most points won the game. 38-33 is our score. Five beta cap on the end. Now, the lead when that buzzer goes off for the last time is the key in the game, but how do you get there and expect North Carolina to go right out the inside? Alley to Stackhouse, excited the crowd with this, the shot. Childress to Rutland. For three. Wake Forest now with eight three-point baskets. That's what's keeping them in this basketball game. Cuts the Carolina lead to two. And when Wake can score, they can get back and set their defense. Just underway in the second half of the ACC Championship game. Williams moves and scores on the paint. Actually oh. missed the shot. He was wide open. I was giving him the bucket. Now Williams very active early in the first half. Here's Childress way out short. I think Williams actually got Childress now going to set it. For all, I think, is going to be a big key in the second half. Wake has to have some offense from him. Childress, too hard. Last touch by Duncan Carolina Ball, 18.43 to play. And you know, every time that whistle blows and Tim Duncan is anywhere in the neighborhood, Dave Odom is going to be holding his breath.
Stephen Wallace gets the foul with that move, that really hard throw in his arms. You can get your arms up there. You don't have to make that big a production of it. You probably get away with it. Even Deacons with a chance to take the lead. Drop step by Duncan. Outside to Rutland. Back to Duncan. Rutland didn't go where Duncan wanted him to go, but eventually he got in a place where he could receive the pass. Nice penetration. It's an 8 nothing run for the Demon Deacons. McGinnis, offensive. Rutland does a great job moving his feet, and McGinnis is going to plow into him with that shoulder. Duncan and Rasheed really going at one another on the inside.
Tell kids to follow their shots. That's a clinic right there. Well, you want Duncan shooting the ball from there. I'm sure Dave Odom would prefer that he stop. Oh, did you see him get up in the air? How did he catch that ball? Dak House makes it 51-46. Jerry Stackhouse with 11 points now. This is on Wallace, and he goes down hard. I thought he stepped on Randolph's shoe inadvertently, and he went down hard. Appears to be okay. 14.07 to play. We'll return after this message from Continental, the official airline of the ACC. More opportunity. Very hard. Rashid get up. He looks okay. That's his third personal foul. So now Wallace with three fouls. Duncan with three fouls. It was interesting as Randolph Childress walked out near midcourt for the inbounds pass. He looked over to Rashid to ask him if he was okay. Good sportsmanship by both sides. 51-46. Zone defense Park, now. Here's Childress from way, way outside. Wow, that's a long, long shot. Under 14 minutes to play in the championship game. Oh. Landry in the game. Here's Williams. To Sullivan. Boy, Braswell's matched up against Wicker on the inside. Begging for help. Landry left alone. Behind. Well's not happy they made a three, but he's just as happy they didn't throw the ball at Zwicker. He was trapped on Zwicker. Five points now for Landry. It's a two-point game. Three-guard offense for the Demon Deacons. Rutland is short. Wake Forest now 11 of 22 from beyond the three-point arc. Inside to go to Stackhouse. Right over top of the Oh, boy, is he something. Jerry Stackhouse ties the game at 51. Boy, Sullivan through that screen trying to find children. Tony Rutland. Wake Forest with a small lineup, not even getting close to the rebound. so that gives him some time. The officials will give you time to tie your shoe. Now you can see that ankle just turns a little bit. The foul against Landry. Now Childress, he don't want to come out of the game, so he gets there and he starts tying his shoe. <laughs> that gives him time to get himself back together. So we're under 12 now. Wake Forest hasn't been able to get inside this zone defense, but now Duncan's back in the game. 1-3-1. Tied at 51. Shot clock at 14. Oh, Stackhouse this one five rows up. Well, it's interesting. Since North Carolina went to the zone, the guys who have shot the ball are Rutland and Braswell. They've kept the ball out of the hands of Childress in shooting position. Shot clock at 10. This is way outside for LaRue. Braswell gets it. They reset the clock. Duncan back to the ball game, takes it strong, gives it the back. Duncan's foul. Duncan doing a great job maintaining his pivot foot. This will powers his way in there. 
Look at the attention that he draws right here. There's three blue shirts around him. Steps very hard to the basket, and there's Stackhouse. That's the first foul on Sullivan. 11-22 to play. We're tied at 51. Concern about his pinky. Now some concern about his ankle. Oh, Peral drops the ball going up. Duncan gets it back. Outside the Childress. The pass down the oh. bank. And a follow by Duncan. It's blocked by Stackhouse. Goaltending. Bucket's good. You know, that's Wake Forest's first conversion. They had missed five three-pointers in a row. Now they get it inside. Stackhouse knocks it out of there. But Duncan, heck, he's shooting down when he starts. Wallace kicks it out to McGinnis. Nice crossover. Oh, ah. Wallace with the ah. follow. Blocked by Duncan. Children's lost that ball going up again. The Wake Forest ball, 10.43 to play. As Children started his move, he lost that ball, Tim. He's really having a hard time picking the ball up off his dribble to carry it to the basket. Deeks by two. limited to the perimeter game. Nice entry pass to Stackhouse. Boy, he's such a powerful presence in there. So quick getting the ball from the floor to the rim. The labor has set him up with a nice little skip pass. 55-53 Wake. Wake Forest now going to play some possession basketball here. Man-to-man -man defense by North Carolina. Again, it's really given some attention to children. Double team forces Childers to give up the ball. The Duncan is fouled. The fouls on Calabria. Time to play a face takes. Identify the player that appeared in the Continental Airlines halftime feature. The number to call 1-800-836-3ACC within 24 hours to enter. Your secret code is 77. Tim, now here's an interesting statistic in this second half. That is team foul number six against North Carolina. For the rest of this ball game, Wake Forest, as Duncan misses that one, but Wake Forest, the best free throw shooting team in the ACC, is going to go to the line on all the fouls. As a team, Wake shoots 77% from the strike. Wake has no fouls. And Duncan misses two. Okay, maybe it's not that big an advantage. Carolina trailing by two with 9.30 to play. Oh, how about Stackhouse? He has 18 points, and Carolina has the lead. This game so similar to the two previous matchups during the regular season. We've had three ties and four lead changes. LaRue shot too hard, and look who's there. Calabria and coming up big again. North Carolina's defense in the second half has really limited Wake out.
turned his ankle. You can see concern on the North Carolina bench. Carolina by six with 7.41 to play. North Carolina on an 11-0 run. So McGinnis at the other end. He has three now, and it's one and one for Wake Forest. And they'll be working on Rasheed Wallace over on that sideline. Well, I hope he's okay. Zwicker comes into the game as you look at Wallace. No question but the fact he's in a lot of pain. Randolph Childress, 83% free throw shooter. Oh, that's three in a row. Wake Forest has missed from the free throw line. The best arrow belongs to Wake. The lead is six. We'll be back after this message from Budweiser doing a job despite those three personal fouls battling against Rasheed Wallace. Wallace gets rid Watch Duncan turn quickly. Perfect block right there. Rasheed Wallace, they're still working on him over on the sideline. The initial word we have is a very bad sprain. You see Wallace will catch the ball as he shoots it. He comes down and I think he just lands on Tim Duncan's foot. But for Wake Forest, Tim, they have settled for the outside shot. They had a five-point lead, and they just started doing nothing but shooting the ball from the outside. When it goes in, that's grand. When it doesn't, North Carolina gets transition opportunities. Rebound by Duncan. Childress tries to bank it. Carolina comes down with it. In addition, Wake Forest has missed three consecutive free throws. The Deacons really struggling on the offensive end. And North Carolina's got enough firepower that they can play without Rasheed Wallace. He's sitting over there on the bench now with an ice wrap on that ankle. Stackhouse can't get the roll. Now Stackhouse is limping. He hurt his ankle. Rutland. Of course, needs a bath. They got it from Duncan. That'll cut the lead to four. And Stackhouse is walking up the court very slowly. He's asking to come out. Frank Scagliata stops the game, his time. Sullivan will come back in and Stackhouse goes out. Well, that's some one-two combination right there. You lose Stackhouse and Wallace back to back. Almost Carolina by four, six and a half to play. Sullivan to Calabria. Calabria gets the screen, takes it left side. Right oh, with a left hand. He has nine points. North Carolina trainer Mark Davis, the busiest guy on the court at the moment. He's not even in the game. They double down on Duncan. They call the jump ball. Possession arrow belongs to Carolina. Jerry Stackhouse just got up and told Dean Smith he's ready to go back in the game. That's Rasheed Wallace, or at least the feet of Rasheed Wallace. Jerry Stackhouse ready to go. And you talk about a tough customer. Jerry Stackhouse fits that bill. I'll tell you this, if they're icing that ankle down, he may not be back. Well, hey, from a, a positive standpoint, he doesn't seem to be in near the pain that he was in before. Five and a half to play now. Williams, back out to Calabria. To Williams. And Zwicker was last one to touch it. It'll be Wake Forest ball. Every possession now becomes critical. 63-57 Carolina with 5.20 to play. 
Well, Wake Forest, their offense has simply deserted it. Stackhouse back in the ball game. And you're right, Wake has gone cold. Well, Wake stayed in this game with three-point shots, but they've missed their last seven three-pointers. A lot of standing around on the Wake Forest offense. Down to Duncan. Back to Rutland. Here's Duncan. Strong move to the hoop. He has 16 points now and 17 rebounds. And he still hasn't picked up a foul in this half. Oh, my. This Olympic trivia question, who was the first company to sign on as a corporate partner of the 1996 Centennial Olympic Games? <laughs> I'll bet you I know the answer to that. Do me a favor, don't give it yet. We'll give the answer in a little bit. I think you already gave it. Now this is the place where Wake Forest has to take advantage of its opportunities. They've missed their last three free throws. Scooter rolls that one in. Banks now has seven points, but you remember early in the game, there Wake Forest shooting five of eight, Carolina six of 12. Early in the game, Wake Forest forced turnovers and didn't convert them. And now here they have an opportunity from the free throw line. Travis Banks had a nice game yesterday against UVA, came up with some big boards, but misses the second free throw here. Rutland gets it back. They have to make their free throw. Rasheed Wallace 
He's getting his ankle taped up. I think we'll see him. Here's another example. All these photographers at this basketball game, and with the NCAA tournament coming up next weekend, Rasheed Wallace is still going to probably come back into this game. Duncan has the advantage, but remember, when Wallace left with 7.41 to play, it was 61.55. Since then, Wake has been on a 16-4 tear. And Wallace is hurrying over on the bench to get his shoes laced up. Looks like he's going to try to go. on the shot clock. This is Williams. He's fouled by the wall. Well, who was the first company to sign on as the corporate partner of the 96 Olympic Games? And the answer is Nations Bank. <laughs> that wasn't very trivial. I thought you were going to give the answer like Billy Packer did the other day. That was a who's buried in Grant's tomb question. Yes, it was. 157 to go in the ballgame. It's 71-65 Wake Forest. Williams at the line. He's a 62% free throw shooter. And Rasheed Wallace went down off the bench area and tried to see if he could go. And his shoe is back off now. Despite that tape job, Wallace has decided that he cannot go. Rusty LaRue comes into the game. Peral goes out. And Dave Odom is telling Ricky for all the last thing in the world they needed to do was foul a three-point shooter. Williams makes it a four-point game. He'll try to cut it even more. In the first game over in Winston-Salem, North Carolina came back from the dead in effect to win the game. Jump ball, possession arrow goes to Wake Forest. The first game between these teams in Winston, over in Winston-Salem, Wake Forest led by 10 points with under six minutes remaining. In fact, they led by four with 39 seconds remaining, and North Carolina still came back to win the game. Oh, Donald Williams with a big shot in that game right at the buzzer. 138 to play in the ACC championship game. Wake Forest leads 71-67. With you. It's a two-point game. The and Demon Deacons lead. And McGinnis is doing everything he can to keep the ball away from children.
tremendous performance today by Randolph Childress, playing with a dislocated finger, 30 points yesterday, 70 points in the first two games. And Wake Forest has a couple of fouls to give. You don't want to give them in shooting situations, however. If you're going to give one of those fouls, you give it as the guy starts his penetration to the basket. This is on Banks. Dave Odom's team has not played very smart basketball down the stretch. Pierce Landry comes in. Sullivan will go out for Carolina. LaRue comes in, and Perrault goes out for Wake Forest. 52.5 seconds remain. has 20 points today, but he has struggled at the line. He's 5 for 10 at the charity strike. It's a three-point game. Forest is going to work hard to keep the ball away from Childress. Here comes the double team. Very close to a steal right there as McGinnis almost got his hands on the ball. 40 seconds left in the ball game. See, they're going to double team Childress every time he gets the ball. 13 on the shot clock. Six on the shot clock. LaRue for three. Rebound for Calabria. Shot clock is off. Got to guard the three. Stack out. Yeah! in this ACC tournament. Jerry Stackhouse for the second day in a row hits a three-point basket late in the game to tie. Remember now, Wake Forest with some fouls to give, doesn't foul, and Stackhouse rises up under pressure and drills it. LaRue going after the three-point shot, but Stackhouse just fills it up. The game is now tied. Wow! Get another opportunity. LaRue has a chance to foul there, but doesn't do it. And Stackhouse does a great job keeping his balance, staying behind the three-point line and dropping it through the net. Timeouts left. Carolina with three. Wake Forest with one. Three fouls to give for Wake Forest, yet they didn't use them. Wake Forest really has done the job behind the three-point line. None bigger, however, for North Carolina than that one that Stackhouse just made. Randolph Childress with 98 points in the tournament, and I'll guarantee you, they'll try to get it to him. But Carolina knows it, and McGinnis jumps him right now. Well, Dean Smith trying to get a look at the Wake Forest defense, and so he's got Pat Sullivan over there trying to report in the game. Now, I don't know that he wants Sullivan in the game as much as he wants to see how Wake Forest is lined up. <laughs> Dean Smith? Well, he hasn't won 938,000 games by being dumb. He's won more ACC tournament games and more titles than any coach in history. And he takes a timeout here. Well, he doesn't take a timeout. He's charged with a timeout. He'll take it. Well, all he was trying to do was to see what Dave Odom, what Dave Odom was trying to do. Dave Odom trying to get his first ACC tournament title. His sixth year. He's been coach of the year two of the last four seasons in the conference.
time Wake Forest was in the ACC championship game in the ACC finals was in 1978. So they don't get in this position very often. Tim Duncan was one year old the last time they were in the title game. Well, this is how they got here. Virginia moved on to play Wake Forest. And Carolina beat Clemson to play Maryland. Two spectacular games yesterday. Carolina went overtime with Maryland. Wake struggled with Virginia, and here we are. The last time an AC, uh, Wake Forest team has won the ACC championship, won the ACC tournament, back in 1962. 33 years ago, Lenny Chapel, Billy Packer, coached by Bones McKinney. A look at Tim with the kind of season that we've had in the ACC. So many games going down to the last possession are being decided in over again. Only appropriate that this one would. One second. We're going an extra period. It's been that kind of tournament in Greensboro. 73 all. We'll be back for the overtime after this. The extra five minutes. And each team gets an extra timeout. So North Carolina with three timeouts. Wake Forest with two. Wake still only has three personal fouls. with that ankle sprain. Stackhouse in the paint. He's fouled by Banks. Four fouls now against Scooter Banks. Randolph Childress. What strength here to get out of this double team. Rips the ball away from Dante Calabria. Both guys go down. Childress, therefore, is open enough to knock down points number 29, 30, and... 31, but Scooter Banks now with four personal fouls. And that's only four team fouls on Wake Forest. And Wake in the zone with the inbounds play. You have to find the shooters. Still oh, one off the half. Oh, boy. Calabria pulls up. And gets the roll. Calabria. He's had a nice tournament. Well, he's had a great year for North Carolina. Children's back to the end. 33 now for Childress. And a three-point lead for Wake. Oh, what move? McGinnis! Three! Great crossover by McGinnis. Randolph Childress within three points of the all-time ACC tournament scoring record. He's not thinking about a scoring record at all, however. You question the power of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Yesterday in the semis, we had four of the top-ranked 11 teams in the country. Here today, number four and number seven in the nation. McGinnis really trying to keep the ball away from Childress. Under three minutes to play in the overtime period. Boy, Duncan asked him for it inside. Wake Forest by one. Five on the shot clock. Williams comes up with it. The numbers aren't there. Brings it back to Stackhouse. Calabria on the baseline. Boy, up the line. That's the 13th turnover for North Carolina. With 2.38 left in the extra period, time out on the floor. We'll take one as well. It's a one-point game. The tournament records the most points in three games for Slay Rosenbluth. 1957, 106. And look at Randolph right behind him. What a tournament he's had. Randolph Childress. And he's doing it yesterday and today with a dislocated little finger on his shooting hand. He's 
got nine three-point baskets today. That's an ACC tournament record. Wake has made 15 three-pointers. That's an ACC tournament record. And they have also attempted 33, and that is an ACC tournament record. Two and a half minutes to play in the overtime period. Wake Forest leads Carolina by one. The only record they're looking for, though, is wins and losses, and North Carolina struggling hard to keep the ball out of the hands of Childers, but he's got it now. Shot clock at 13. Left alone. That was a tough, tough shot. McGinnis with good defensive pressure. Childers off balance. The inability of Childers with that dislocated finger to handle the ball effectively has hampered him. McGinnis called for the clear out on the right side. Rutland with good defense. Here's Donna Williams. Sullivan was left alone, passed up the shot. Here's Williams. This is for three. Big rebound for Duncan. A minute and a half to play in the overtime period. Wake Forest with a tremendous size advantage inside. Childress with the running one-hander, nothing but net. And they have a tremendous Childress advantage outside. Tar Heels trailing by three. decisions and that's one right there he saw an opening to the basket and a chance to maybe end the game Sullivan steps in draws the offensive foul 48 seconds left Carolina trailing by three don't necessarily need the three but whatever you need whatever you're going to get you've got to get it quickly here's Landry and they've got their three point shooters in the game kick it out to Landry to play in the overtime period. Dave Odom upset that North Carolina was granted that timeout. Here's the first look by Donald Williams. Boy, you don't want to give him two in a row. Jerry Stackhouse, who made the three to send the game into overtime, gets the rebound and enables Donald Williams to tie it up again. Williams, the first time it was from a standstill. That time he dribbled the ball, went to his left, and fired it up there. McGinnis gets the ball. Now watch Williams. He's just going to get the ball from Landry. Steps into it, but misses it. Now Stackhouse way up for the rebound, and watch Williams. He gets the ball now. One dribble to the left, knocks it in the basket. The great reaction from Donald Williams. We've got a lot of guys who can shoot threes in this game, and North Carolina down three, desperately needing a three at the end of regulation. And right here with under 20, they hit that with 23. Get it both times. Carolina with two timeouts left. Wake Forest with two timeouts left. Time remaining, 21.7 seconds. And Dave Odom was angry that they were granted that timeout because he wanted his team to just bring the ball up the court. North Carolina called the timeout to set the defense. Now, the strategy if you're Wake Forest is in this situation with the game tied, you must make sure that you take the last shot of the game. You do not want to take the shot so early in the clock that it enables North Carolina to get a rebound and run down and score. However, you must be aggressive with the basketball because North Carolina is just not going to sit back and let you whittle the seconds away. They're going to attack. I'm sure they're going to try to keep the ball out of the hands of Randolph Childress. Here's a look at his mom. She can hardly bear to watch. Tied at 80. 
21.7 seconds remain. And North Carolina is just not going to let them whittle the clock away. Here comes Landry for the double team now. Cross court pass to Corral. Ten seconds left. Back to Childress. It's his game double now. Team again. Childress. Yes! Four seconds left. to do what it hasn't done in 33 years. And one of the big stories of this basketball game is Rasheed Wallace sitting there by himself on the North Carolina bench with that injured ankle. North Carolina showing you that they have a lot of weapons. They've been able to hang into this basketball game despite the fact that they lost Rasheed Wallace. The ball is out of the hands of number 22 for Wake Forest right now. North Carolina going to have the ball on the offensive end. Two to tie, three to win. As we mentioned, the last overtime game that occurred in the championship game of the ACC tournament was in 1974, that classic Maryland-North Carolina State game. Now, Dave Odom elects to put 6'9", Ricky Perral on the basketball. Four seconds to play. Stackhouse calls timeout with three seconds left. So the Tar Heels of North Carolina will have three seconds to work at their end of the court to get off the shot. And Tony Rutland was over there trying to give the foul. The option pass by Sullivan. Oh, it was a tremendous pass by Sullivan and a great catch by Stackhouse. That was not an easy ball to handle. Dante Calabria goes down here. You'll watch Calabria come into your screen. He's going to try to set a screen against Peral. Gets just enough room for Sullivan. That is a great pass. And Stackhouse, like the wide receiver, both feet inbounds. You see Rutland trying to give the foul, but Stackhouse gets the timeout first. That's the last timeout for North Carolina. Now again, one of the key stats in this second half is that Wake Forest still only has five team fouls. You do not want to give the foul in the shooting situation. If you're going to give that sixth foul, you want to make sure that you give it before the guy goes into the shooting motion. You certainly don't want to foul a three-point shooter in this situation in the game. With three seconds. 
That's plenty of time with the ball at half court. Wake Forest now, with that much time left in the game, the Deacons cannot afford to just defend the three-point line because North Carolina's got time to get the ball inside, tie the game, and go to the second overtime. And that would satisfy Dean Smith just fine, I would think. They're on their feet in the Greensboro Coliseum. Three seconds left. Now Dick Paparo stops the game. All right, three seconds to go. Carolina trailing by two. Stackhouse, this is for three. championship since 1962. over the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Standing by now with the winning coach, Dave Odom, is Dan Bonner. Thank you very much, Tim. Dave, tremendous effort by your squad, Randolph Childress, with all nine points in that overtime. Well, I'm not surprised. I, I would have been surprised if you had told me anything different. What a way for an absolute great All-America to end his ACC career. Just, just what a wonderful way. And uh, I can't say enough about him. I can't say enough about our team. I can't say enough about North Carolina. Uh, we earned everything we got. They made us earn it. They are one tough team. And uh, I don't know what you say. It's just, uh, just a wonderful feeling. It really is. Dave, it's, it has been a, a tremendous year for you. You've gotten big performances by a lot of different guys. Tim Duncan, boy, he's really come into his own. And he got those three fouls in the first half. But you could have never told it in the second half. What a performance he gave you as well. I don't think anything depicts that he is old beyond his years more than what you just described. Three fouls, I should have probably had him out. I have so much confidence in him, sometimes it's like blind faith. And, and he tells me he can do it, I believe him. I, Coach, I won't make a foul. <laughs> and I, you know, I, I, I let him go. Uh, perhaps that's a weakness. Nevertheless, uh, I believe uh, that he could play the rest of the game without fouls. Certainly, without question, Rashid Wallace's injury was a major factor in this game. There's no question about that. But still, the game had to be won on the basketball court with those there. Our kids do it. Our, our kids did it. They deserve a lot of credit, as do North Carolinas. Thanks very much, Dave. Congratulations. Good luck as you start next week. Let's go over to Paul Cameron. He's got Randolph children. All right, here he is, the man of the hour. Hey, it was your tournament, fella, and we just got the pleasure of watching it. Congratulations. ACC champs. It feels good. Uh, like I said, I really can't say how we, enough about how we really work for this. I think we were the team. No one predicted us to win. You know, watching the games earlier today, all you heard, you know, was Carolina was the number one seed. Carolina was going to come in today's game and win. There's no way we we're going to be able to shut Rasheed out the way we did at Chopper Hill. But beyond everything and everyone else didn't believe is uh, the 12 guys that's on this team and the call coaching staff believe that we will win, and that's the reason why we went out and won our game today. You just yanked the tape off your finger. How is it doing? Did it affect you in the second half at all? Obviously not in overtime when you go and score nine points, 37 on the game, eight three-pointers, nine three-pointers, excuse me. 
It bothered me. Uh, like I said, I, I said it yesterday. I, I was not going to use this for any excuse if I scored 30 plus or if I didn't score five points each time. I'm not going to use this for an excuse. So uh, I'm just happy that we, uh, we won the game. And uh, I just wasn't going to let anything. I was determined not to let anything stop me. I've been through too much in my career. I've uh, never been expected to accomplish a lot. But I was determined this year, my senior year, to do the best I can and, and for me to win every game possible. No doubt about that. We saw Tim Duncan there. Of course, he contributed mightily as when Rashid went out. But what about the other guys? Tony Rutland, who knocked down a couple of trays in the second half. Uh, the, the lift that Ricky Peral gave you throughout the, this tournament. They're the reason why we're here today. Uh, you know, me and Timmy get, has done different things throughout the season. Obviously, we're two, you know, we're two first-team All-ACC guys. And, uh, but you don't win. You have, you have to have balance in this conference. And uh, no one or two individuals can carry a team. Rashid and, and Stackhouse are great players, and they carry Carolina. But without McGinnis, Donald Williams, and Calabria, they definitely wouldn't be where they are. Each team has great players, but the role players decide wh how great you're going to be. A sweet victory. Sweet as it gets, right? Words can't describe how sweet this victory is. Considering what was at stake in my career, uh, you know, it, it means the world to me. You know, it's the reason why I came back to school. Though. That's the reason why I came back instead of my senior year because of this. Amazing. Congratulations, Randolph Childers. Well, Great year for this young man. We'll be back to the Greensboro Coliseum. Wake Forest wins it in overtime after this from Budweiser. A great moment in Wake Forest history. The Demon Deacons have beaten the Tar Heels 82-80 in overtime, and Dave Odom getting a piece of the championship net. Wake Forest goes to 24 and 5. The number one seed wins this tournament. The Deeks rank seventh in the country with the 64 team field to be announced here shortly. They aren't even thinking about that here in the Greensboro Coliseum, folks. This is a great moment for Dave Odom, for Randolph Childress, and for the fans of Wake Forest. basketball on the Ray Tom and Jefferson Pilot Sports Network will continue after these messages from your local ACC station. The one-time home of the Wake Forest Demon Deacons win their ACC championship of 1995 on this Greenville Coliseum floor. And the Tar Heels fall victim to a twisted heel of uh, Rashid Wallace. Bucky Waters joins me now. Bucky, this is uh, an historical day, really, for Wake Forest basketball. It really is. And, you know, when Wallace went down with 7.40 to go, Duncan wasn't really a factor after that. It was all chill, they call him. Uh, and I'm not sure if that's short for Childress or just how he plays under pressure. Looking back the last time they did this, it was Len Chapel and Billy Packer. Billy had some great days as a guard. Nothing, nothing in his wildest imagination to, uh, to uh, match what happened out there today for the Deacons in the backcourt. Extraordinary. Heedy children in overtime scoring all nine points, but nothing childlike about it. That was a big man stepping up the go-to guy as Duncan and Childers celebrate back in just a minute. The final again at the Greensboro Coliseum. Wake Forest continues to celebrate their ACC championship in overtime, 82-80. So close. Landry's follow-up at the Horn in overtime could have gone, but this has been an extraordinary tournament. A great run for the Deacons. Just a great three days. Just no question. I got my souvenir, fellas. I got Randolph Childress's sweat in this suit all down my back. I'm just going to hang it up in the closet and watch it for, <laughs> through the NCAAs and see how it does. I've had a delightful time, and uh, Tim and Dan, you've done a great job over there. Thanks. We've uh, enjoyed being a part of this tournament in your living rooms, folks. So we look forward, look forward to seeing you again next year. Tim. Paul, thank you very much. It has been a special day. Carolina led by five at the half, 73 all. And then Wake Forest winning by two in overtime. Randolph Childress, I mean, there's just nothing really more that we can say about him. He had the best ACC tournament I think anybody could ever have. He was absolutely outstanding. He's that magical player that makes it all worthwhile. Well, as the highlights from the tournament play in the background, Wake Forest with a two-point overtime win to win the ACC championship. A lot of people to thank. Dan Bonner, Bob Rathman, Paul Cameron, Bucky Waters, everybody in our JP staff. We thank them. John Madry for his numbers today. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports. Any use of this broadcast without their express permission is prohibited.
Once again, the final from the Greensboro Coliseum. Wake Forest, 82. The Tar Heels of North Carolina, 80. You have been watching exclusive coverage of ACC basketball on the Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports Network. So long, everybody.